Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for the interview. Uh, you grew up in Framingham, yeah. right next door. How was it that like for you to grow up in a place so close to sports and the families are really, really uh, intense? Yeah, that's what made it special because I was there. You know, I was one of them. I was a sports fan and cared about all the teams. And you go up to Framingham, basically right in between Worcester and Boston, you kind of, you know, you got to see both sides of it, but everybody was just the same. Everybody just loved sports so much, but that was me. So when I got to play in Boston, I understood what the fan base was like. I understood what the passion was like. Even though I was playing for the Red Sox, I was still a fan. You know, so it was uh, it was special. Rumor has it that you were a substitute gym teacher in yeah. your high school, yeah. for 12 season. How was that? Like? So when I was like probably I'd say in A ball or double A, my sister was a teacher, and she thought that you know in the off season training, working out, you come in and substitute teach two or three days a week. So I did. So it was like gym was one of the classes. I do math sometimes, but it was actually a really good job for me in the off season. Wake up in the morning, go there, hang out. You know, I always like being around the kids and I was playing ball. So, and then when I got out of school, because school got over early, I'd go work out. So it was actually a really good job. I had a lot of fun. But I have a lot of people now come up to me that are a lot older to say I was one of the substitute teachers. Now you were a uh, part of the Red Sox farm system. Yeah. What does uh, this team make different, or what makes the Red Sox unique in the farm system? Well, I think back, it's, everything's a little, little bit different now. You know what I mean? But even back then, you know, just the history of the organization. You know, everywhere you went, so we were always in different ballparks. There was an A ball in Sarasota. They were always moving around, and it was Trenton, New Jersey, and some Kentucky. So, um, but the tradition. It's kind of like what's being built here, you know, right now. Uh, we came up with it down in Rhode Island. So, um, it was special because you know, it always, for me, some of the Red Sox sports to come, spring training, pop in Pawtucket, pop in New Jersey, pop in Florida, and I got to meet guys that I grew up watching. So that's a lot of What about our guys? Those guys are called all the you were pilot. Yeah. You, you were one of those guys that transitioned far enough from the league. Yeah. What do you guys apply for those guys? The obvious answer is they control what you control. And it's a lot easier said than done. You know, for me, it was always when I got set down, I was determined to get back up. And even though I went up and down many times, the one thing I was always proud of is that I was my back You know, and a lot of guys that come back down, they feel sorry for themselves, they lose focus, uh, they never get it back to the point where they earn another, you know, call up to the big league. So um, I would say just kind of put blinders on, control what you can control, always try to get better. Uh, everybody has a hole in their game at some point, so try to you know fill that hole and try to you know fix it. Um, but always be determined. Like never lose that fire. I want to get up to the next level. What's your best memory of your organization? That's probably the first time I got called up. You know, Ken Mocker walked in and told me after the game that I was going to join the team at Kansas City. That's where my first big league game was. Um, and then getting up to the big time over a few years. It was just amazing, but you know, 99, 03 playoffs. Uh, unfortunately, 03 didn't end the way I would have liked. Um, but just like the memories and the players I got to play with. You know, when you come up in my rookie year, I'm playing with Dennis Eckerson. And I play with Ricky Henderson. And I play with Red Saber. And of course, Pedro and Manny and Ortiz and Norman and John Valentin. So it was a pretty special group. Those are things I remember the most. After you retired, you transitioned to radio and everything, TV. Yeah. Uh, what is that like to have that closer contact with people calling you all the time, you know, trying to talk about Red Sox, sharing the passions? What is that like? Yeah, I always liked it. You know, I mean, it can, you know, you did it for 15 years. Yeah. So the back and forth, sometimes you got to know how to kind of control it and understand where it's coming from, but the passion's always there. People love the game, people love the sports in this city, in this town. <laughs> Um, and I, I could sit and talk baseball all day long. So I'm in this world of this and I'll be there. You know, so it's like you do things on Twitter, you social media, whatever it is. But the radio station was always fun. The best part of doing sports radio was interacting, I think, with fans and kind of going back and forth with opinions. What do you think about Polo Park? Do you like it? Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's got everything. Yeah, it's, um, I'm amazed at the minor league parks. You go to E-ball, double-A, the six league parks, and this is first class. So this, is, this is a pretty special experience. It's a lot of fun to be here.
And lastly, a shout out to our Woosox Nation being out there. Yeah, Woosox Nation out there. Enjoy this team, support this team. You have an amazing ballpark. Come down here, check it out. There is nothing like spending a day with the family at the ballpark here in Worcester. Thank you very much. You got it. All right.